want to share with you yeah. and your family, your family. The love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. So tune in, tune in, and we will grow together to increase our faith with God. With one touch, ministries, we're touching hearts and changing lives. I 
Well, listen, we are going to continue today our message on Sound the Alarm. Thank you so much, honey. I appreciate that. Listen, not only is it hot outside, but it's hot in this building. <laughs>
and it shall be received into the hearts of men. For those who are here, those who are watching from, a, from afar, God, I pray, Lord, that they shall receive the word of God on today. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Now on today, we're talking about sanctifying yourself because God is about to make you a wonder. So then as we uh, go about this, this scripture reference, you're going to see why I said God is about to make you a wonder. Because, well, I don't want to get a little ahead of myself, but let me give you a definition of sanctification. To sanctify is, uh, is set apart. It means to set apart. And uh, as, to, uh, as to set apart, as to declare holy, consecrated, free from sin, purified. Sanctification is defined as an action of making or declaring something holy. The action or process of being free from sin or purified. The action of causing something to be or some. Uh, something that's merely acceptable. And so then as I did research on this and I started seeing certain things, uh, I noticed that certain things God allowed to be sanctified. Uh, when it comes down to uh, uh, Moses, when he had the, the rod that was a sanctified item that was used for the glory of God. And so then also, uh, we as God's people, we ought to be sanctified. We ought to be set apart. Um, there should be something different that's about us. And so that's the reason why we are called saints, because we're saints. We're separated uh, from the things of the world. And so that's why uh, we, uh, we're putting out a clarion call today to say to sanctify yourself because God is about to make you a wonder. Sanctification is an action of setting something or someone apart as holy, purifying it, and dedication and dedicating it to God's service. Without holiness, no one would see the Lord, according to Hebrews 12 and 14. We are in need of God's sanctification and God's a, a sanctification grace to be made holy and the reason why we need that because God is holy. Consecration, calling, and holiness are all related terms that help us to understand the biblical concept of sanctification. Now, there are Bible verses about sanctification. They teach us that God called people to be holy sanctify and be set apart free from sin empower us to serve him through faith and obedience. So I have some rapid scriptures um, that if you're on Facebook, the Minister Henry is going to just put them down there in the comment section really quick. Uh, some examples of sanctification in the Bible is uh, Exodus chapter 29 through chapter 30. And in the Old Testament, both people and ordinary objects were sanctified uh, for sacred purposes. Once they were set apart as instruments of God's service, they were never to be used for mundane purposes. So uh, that's the reason why God said that you have to be sanctified, you have to be set apart because you're just not you're just not here on earth just to be used just for ordinary reasons. You're not here just for ordinary purposes. God has set you apart because you have a work that needs to be done. Oh, hallelujah. Uh, there's a work that needs to be done. We are all called to be able to be witnesses of the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know that there are countries that you can go to that you cannot proclaim the name of Jesus Christ? They will cut off your arm, they'll cut off your leg, and they'll try to have you renounce Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. So this is the reason why we have to be sanctified. And John 17, 15 through 18, and Romans 12, 1 through 2, these are practices um, and foreshadows of sanctification for the church. God sets people apart from the world to honor him through 
sacri uh, sacrificial services. And I didn't, I didn't want to take the time out to go through all those scriptures. So, um, so make sure you guys go back and go read those scriptures later. Uh, Hebrews 9, 11 through 14 says, People are purified from their sins by the blood of Jesus Christ. In Romans 8, 29, it says, And they are conformed to the image of Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 16 uh, through 24. And 1 Peter 1, 14 through 16 says, God's whole, it says, as Christians, um, submit to the life of the Holy Spirit, they grow in godliness, reflecting God's character. The more we begin to grow in God, the more we begin, begin to grow in our sanctification, we reflect the character of God. And so this is one of the reasons why sometimes um, you turn and you look at people, you say, are they really a believer? Are they really a, 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 a Christian believer? Are they really a follower of Christ? Because their character don't match up with the characteristics of Christ. Don't match up, it don't match up. So I want you today to say, sanctify yourself because God, he wants to make you a wonder. Romans 1, 5, and uh, I'm sorry, Romans 1 uh, and 7, and 1 Corinthians 1 and 2, those who have been sanctified are called saints or holy ones. In the New Testament, the term saint applies to every follower of Jesus, not just perfect Christians. Because we have a notion, we have a, we have a thought that we have to uh, live holy, we have to be right, but we don't have to be perfect. We have to continue to work towards that perfection. We have to continue to repent and be able to go to God and say, God, I messed up. But we are still allowed to be called saints. Romans 6, uh, 5 through 14. God uh, sanctifies people from their sins and set them apart from the world to serve him alone. This is the reason why we have to be sanctified. Why? Because God wants, him to, wants us to serve him and serve him only. He wants us to be sanctified and serve him and worship him only. He said that he travels to and forward from the earth to seek those who worship him. And 2 uh, Timothy 2, 21 and 1 Peter, 1 Peter 2 and 9. God calls every Christian to set themselves apart from the world in order to honor God in their lives. This is the reason why we have to be sanctified, because we have to show the people in the world the characteristics of God. We have to show the people in the world, you know, when they see us, they literally see God. They don't, you know, we're a reflection. We are ambassadors of Christ. We are ambassadors of of Christ. And so uh, this is the reason why we have to be able to be purified. We have to be sanctified in the name of Jesus. Let me turn this down just real quick. One, two. I don't know if that's the monitor. All right, here we go. So God calls us to be consecrated unto him. Consecration means setting something apart from the world to serve God. The nations of Israel was consecrated to honor God with their lives. Abraham, Isaac's first, uh, Abraham Isaac uh, was the first uh, patriarch, was set apart from his nation and his uh, family to serve God in the land of Canaan. His descendants became the nation of Israel. They were called out from among all the nations of the earth to worship God alone. The people of Israel were set apart as God's special possessions. They were, they were, they were to represent God before all the nations of the earth, demonstrating that how the holiness of God, uh, to keep the Sabbath, to obey God's commandments. God commanded, commanded commandments revealed his standards. So you want to know uh, what, how to live holy and how to be holy, check out those commandments that he uh, set before. Now that's, those are just the beginning of some of the commandments. Those are not all of the commandments. 
the commandments provided a practical way for God's people to display his holiness to the world. In the Bible, uh, the Israelites were unable to consecutively keep God's law. They failed to worship God alone. They began to worship um, other gods. Picking up the practices from idols and from the Canaanite culture. They broke God's requirements of love and uh, of, of loving their neighbor, loving themselves. Instead, they obeyed, um, instead of them obeying God directly, they did exactly what they wanted to do in their own hearts. God was dishonored by their disobedience. Instead of being glorified, God's name uh, was, was not being proclaimed throughout the nations. God promised to restore his good name by empowering his people to keep his commandments through the power of the Holy Spirit. God fulfilled his promises through the new covenant and God wrote his commandments in, uh, God, in, in, in the people's hearts and empowered them to overcome sin and temptation through the power of the Holy Spirit. God renews his covenant with the church, once again calling people to represent his holiness before the nations of the earth. The church is set apart from the world to serve God. So on today is the reason why, and I went all through that to say, is that on today I'm sounding the alarm to sanctify yourself because God is going to make you a wonder. God wants to be able to show the entire world exactly how God moves, how God breathes, how he can heal people, how he can set people free. You are the representative of God's nation. You are the representative of God's glory. You are the representative of God, of the nature of God, the power of God, the kingdom of God. And so this is the reason why God is calling us today to be holy and to be acceptable in his sight. Don't you know that God said that he's coming back for a church without a spot or a wrinkle? The Bible says that we live in this world, but we're not of this world. So let me get back to my scriptures really quick. Can I turn the volume up back? Is the sound system acting right again? All right, here we go. I have to get a little more. Water. There we go. Amen. Hallelujah. The Bible says this. I'm going back to my scripture. The Bible says this in Joshua chapter 3. The Bible says this in Joshua chapter 3. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Verse 2. It says, and it came to pass after three days, you, it says here, it came to pass after three days. Now, I want you to understand that three, the, the number three represents something. It represents something that you guys don't even understand. You have to understand the prophetic significance of the number three. The number three represents the divine perfection of God. It's God the Father. It's God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. We have the three patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We have three times in the scriptures that it says the seraphims cried, Holy, holy, holy unto our God. Baby Moses was hidden in his mother for, uh, uh, by his mother for three months. The tabernacle of Moses was divided into three different parts, which was the outer court, the inner court, and the holy of the holies. I really can't wait till I get a chance to teach that. That right there is so powerful. Jonah spent three days in the belly of a fish. Jesus' ministry covered three different Passovers. Jesus went uh, missing for three days when he was a boy, when he was 12 years old. Jesus took three men, Peter, James, and John, up to the Mount of Transfer, uh, Transfiguration. Jesus prophesied that he would be risen from the dead in three days. And I'm here to tell you that I'm so glad that God was risen in three days. Because on the third day, he risen. He went down to hell and he got the keys to the 
kingdom of heaven. And he said, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. So I'm so glad today that you realize that on the third day that dead things live again. Hallelujah. I'll say it again. You got to realize that on the third day, dead things live again. You got to understand that nothing breaks a three-strand cord. Hallelujah. It's so hard to break a three-strand cord. You got to understand that God has the power on high, and he is God the Father. He's God the Son. Son, and he's got the Holy Spirit. Come on, tap into the comments and say there's power in three. Hallelujah. You got to understand that the presence of God, he he uh he 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 will hide you in his temple. You got to understand that, that although you may be feeling like that you have been swallowed into the pit of hell, and it seems like that you've been down there for the past three days, but I'm here to tell you that it's time to get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that grave. God don't want you there, and he don't want you to stay in Lodabar. You got to come out of that sickness. You got to come out of that darkness. You got to come out of the place that God don't want you to be. There is power in the three. There is power in the Father. And there's power in the Son. And there's power in the Holy Spirit. Touch somebody say, neighbor, is power in the three. Hallelujah, there's power in the three. Now watch this, y'all, watch this. So after the third day, on the third day, watch this. Giving instructions to the people. That's what they did. They went along and gave instructions to the Israelite. And they said, hey, listen, this is what I need you guys to do. I need you guys, when you see the Ark of the Covenant, and I wish I had time to talk about the Ark of the Covenant, the Ark of the Covenant that contained uh, the, 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 the Ten Commandments, it contained a jar of man, and also contained uh, 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 the tablet, the jar of man, it's one more thing, I can't even think of it right now. But there was three things that was inside of the Ark of the Covenant. And so they said, when you see the Ark of the Covenant, when it passes before you, he said that I need for you to follow it. He said the reason why you need to follow it is because you've never been this way before. So I'm here to encourage you, ladies and gentlemen, that you need to be able to follow God. Follow God exactly when he says, when it's time for you to move, it's time for you to move. When God has said it's time for you to uh, get up and go, it's time for you to get up and go. And the reason why he said, I need for you to follow the cloud. The reason why he said, I need you to follow the ark of the covenant. The reason why he said, I need you to follow it because you've never been this way before. I'm here to tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that you have never been in the position that you're in before. Hallelujah, you've never traveled this way before. I'm here to tell you that this nation has suffered something that they've never suffered with before. And I'm here to tell you that you got to pick up yourself when you see the Ark of the Covenant. When you see the Ark of the Covenant, you need to move. Come on, y'all, you got to move your with your right foot. And you got to move with your left foot. And you got to follow the presence of God. I don't know about you, but I got to follow the presence of God. I don't care if God comes to me in the clouds. I don't care if God comes to me, he shakes the mountain. I don't care if God comes to me in a still whisper of a voice. But I need for God to be able to move for me in my situation. I need to be able to see God moving in my circumstance. I've never been this way before. I've never moved to the south before. And I'm here to tell you that I'm moving with the cloud. I'm here to tell you that I'm moving with the Ark of the Covenant. I see the Levitical priests, they're moving. And I'm going to follow them exactly where they're going. And I'm here to tell you on today that you got to learn how to move with the cloud. I'm here to tell today to tell you that you got to move with the Ark of the Covenant. You've never been in this position before. You've never been broken before. You 
you've never been lost before, and you've never had family before, lost your family before, you've never been in a situation of being jobless, and I'm here to tell you that you might have never been this way before, but I'm here to tell you that uh, God is here to lead you, God is here to develop you, God is here to set you free, you've never been put in a position before of sickness and affliction, I'm here to tell you today that God is moving on your behalf, your marriage may seem like that it's rocky, but I'm here that God is here moving on your behalf, you've never been here before, you've never traveled in this direction before, and I'm here to tell you today that God is on the move, type into the comment section right now that God is on the move, God is on the move, God is on the move, he's moving in my situation.
by yourself uh, because when people hear about you, uh, when people hear and call upon the name of the Lord, uh, then you shall be saved. Uh, your family members shall be saved. Uh, right now, I would type into the comments, uh, your family members uh, whose name means to bow. Section for the names of your family members that needs to bow down to the name. Uh, every name, uh, every name has to bow. Uh, every tongue uh, shall confess uh, that Jesus, 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 J-E-S-U-S, Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. He is the great I am. He is Yahweh. He is the Holy Child. He is the God my provider. He is the Holy the Kedesh. He is the Holy Sentish. He is the Holy Year. Promising 
though your sins be as scarlet, they may be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. Today, I am sounding the alarm to sanctify yourself. Because not that God just wants to do great things among you, but He wants to make you a wonder. Or today, if you have not fully given your life to the Lord, I need for you to begin to ask God to purge me, to cleanse me, to make me new. Because God, I, I can't live like this. I can't live like this. I have to be cleansed. I have to be set aside for the work of the Lord. Set aside for the work of the Lord. Father God, right now, I pray for each and every person that is listening to me under the sound of my voice, whether they're listening to me right now on Instagram or if they're listening to me on Facebook or if they're listening to me on our YouTube channel. That Father God, that in the name of Jesus, that you will touch their hearts and they will change their lives right now in the name of Jesus. For every single one of you that's listening under the sound of my voice, I just need you to repeat this prayer really quick. Father God, in the name of Jesus, come into my heart, come into my life, come into my spirit. Make me a brand new person. Satan, I renounce you now. Go for me. You are not my God. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. Now, Father God, take my fleshly desires. Take, my, take me off the throne of my life. And Father God, I put you there right now in the name of Jesus. I believe and I receive. I confess in my heart and I believe with my mouth that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead, and he came to save a wretch like me. I thank you, Lord. I believe and I receive. And I believe right now that you are, you have written my name in the Lamb's book of life. Now, Father God, teach me how to live out the rest of my days, God. To be holy and acceptable unto you, God. Teach me, God, how to live a sanctified life. Allow me to turn from my wicked ways. So that when it's time for me to meet you, that you can say, It's written, my good. Yes. That he's going to cover 
Jesus. We send the Holy Ghost to Pakistan right now in the name of Jesus. We send the Holy Ghost to Pakistan in the name of Jesus. Cover it. My God. Woo. The Holy Ghost to Pakistan. The Holy Ghost to Pakistan. I said the Holy Ghost to Pakistan. Right now in Jesus' name. And it is so. It is God bless you, Pastor. Listen, if you have not been able to be a blessing, be a blessing now. Come on. Sow your seed so you can have a harvest. Yeah. Sow your seed so it can be a harvest. Pastor you said don't you worry God said don't worry The Holy Ghost is on its way to Pakistan He's already dispatching angels He's already sending angels His angels already charged that way Angels are already charged that way The devil is a liar. There's angels already being trans in transit right now. They're going to Pakistan right now. They're gonna cover you. They're gonna cover the town. They're gonna cover the children. They're gonna cover the children. They're gonna cover the children. Yes, we did. 
did. We were out. Yes, we did. My husband had to make fun. He said, baby, you pray from morning to the night. I was on a prayer line every night just about. Wow. I prayed. Remember, I used to pray Monday night, yes. Tuesday night, yes. Wednesday night, yes. Thursday night. I think Friday was the only night I had to sit there. I know after Friday night, I would be in class, spiritual maturity class. Yes, yes. But some of y'all don't know. Y'all need to go to maturity class, spiritual maturity class. Come on now, come on now. Worship. And the prayers kept us yes. while we lived there. Yes. Before the riot came, we moved at least three weeks before the riots came in Philadelphia. Yeah. They tore up the area we were living in. We were living right there and they tore it up. Tore up the streets, tore up the businesses, tore up cars, broke into cars, stealing cars. We moved right out of Philadelphia three weeks before the riot. Because why? The Holy Ghost, we were obedient. We put the blood on the That's right. The yeah. He said, because why? Get a blood. Pass over. Man, you preach that I'm done. I'm done. Listen, we get ready to get out of here, y'all. We love you. Pastor Yusuf, get ready to call us. My God. Listen, we love each and every one of y'all. I don't know about y'all, but the best days is yet to come. Ooh, yeah. I said the best days is yet to come. I said the best days is yet to come. Y'all better hold on. Trust God while you have an opportunity to. Because the best days, the best days are yet to come. I want you to put your hands together. I want you to hold on.